we're on with Peter Vyhansky, Descartes' senior vice president and one of the leaders of both uh, Descartes' cloud initiatives, partner, partner relationships, and a whole host of clients, particularly in the capital markets, financial services areas. Obviously, we can say that the world we're living is cloud first. Everything starts with clouds and lives on with cloud when it's done in terms of software and systems, I, I mean. Both risk and opportunity obviously lies in any decision to go with a particular cloud or a particular cloud architecture. How do you see clients make those decisions? How do they choose to commit to one ecosystem, one platform versus the other? How do they evaluate this opportunity versus risk uh, in, your, in your mind? And how do they move be, be, beyond theory into the practical aspects of those decisions? Thank you, Alex. Well, first of all, uh, we're not quite there yet with the world being fully cloud first. Uh, many companies are in fact adopting this as a, uh, an official part of their IT strategy. Uh, but even uh, for those companies, declaring that to be part of your strategy is one thing and getting there physically uh, is quite another. But uh, it, it, um, so on a general level, on the highest level, uh, you're right. I mean, the, the world has clearly changed uh, compute uh, storage and networking uh, provided via, you know, uh, the cloud model is now the norm. Uh, from the standpoint of how our, uh, our customers are making those decisions um, with respect to which, let's say, hyperscale provider to go with and how to architect their systems and how to orchestrate their migrations and uh, implement their IT strategies over time and space, um, it really differs. It really differs on the sort of risk and threat model that uh, these companies uh, base their calculations on. With some, it's a very practical matter of their uh, uh, there being a particular set of services that their particular application estate or IT estate requires. And so um, uh, the, the, the decision in the moment uh, may be based on a combination of we know how to make our stuff work on, let's say, Azure or GCP. Uh, therefore, we'll go there. Uh, it's obviously more complex than that. Uh, I cannot be reduced to a single factor. Uh, uh, long-term and large-scale financial uh, commitments uh, are a factor in those decisions. For example, um, um, even even though many enterprises adopt a cloud uh, agnostic or platform agnostic stance where in principle they would like to um, have the ability and the freedom to move across platforms if need be, that does not mean that they will go to all three or two of the three uh, largest cloud providers at the same time. Um, they will build that up, that, that, that opportunity into how they architect their um, applications and systems, for example, using something like Kubernetes and containerized uh, workloads. Um, but that does not mean that they go to all three at the same time. For example, um, it's no secret that all three of the major providers um, um, structure the financials of what they offer to customers based on the uh, um, desire to incentivize customers to put all of their eggs or most of their eggs in one basket versus three. And, and is, is it working? Do you see clients increasingly taking that risk or perceived risk and saying, yes, we will sometimes perhaps feel like hostages to this chosen platform, but the benefits clearly outweigh that uh, dependency risk? Or do you see uh, maybe scientifically not that large portfolio, but very important portfolio of clients you're dealing with, they're, they're hedging their bets. I would say the hedging of the bets is more of a matter, uh, more a matter of rhetoric and strategy uh, uh, than practical implementation in actual reality that we see. So uh, people do not, are not behaving as though they're actually afraid of becoming hostage uh, to one or mm -hmm. the other, uh, one or, or, or another provider. Sometimes it's a matter of, like I said, there's, there, there being no alternative, right? For example, let's say Google. Google has this powerful technology called BigQuery. Uh, for some applications, there really isn't a lot of uh, alternative uh, avenues for people to take if that's the functionality they require, therefore GCP. Mm -hmm. um, and similar examples can be thought of for Azure and uh, no, AWS, I have no doubt. But um, to your question, I um, again, uh, even though on a strategic level, uh, we see customers uh, ha having a preference for some sort of independence and portability, 
uh, that does not stop them in practical reality from going ahead with implementations on a particular um, mm. a, a particular platform. And uh, keep in mind, I mean, underlying technologies are still um, similar across platforms, right? So even yeah. though you may be using some cloud native uh, services on, let's say, AWS, Underneath there, uh, those services lies, in, in most cases, some open source technology. So with some rework, you can uh, port to a similar uh, implementation right. or similar functionality on a, on a competing platform. Understood. Uh, so you've mentioned a little earlier that the it may be tempting to think of world as cloud first or cloud only, but reality is somewhat lagging. I think one industry where it's clearly lagged for a while is financial services, where firms have, with good reason, held off on uh, jumping headfirst into cloud for a long time, perhaps longer than many other sectors. Mm -hmm. It feels to me like in the re in, in recent months, maybe a year plus, that has changed somewhat drastically, and now there's a bit of a stampede in financial services for this belated migration and, and a new implementation. Do you see the same? Is it is it a fair characterization or they're still somewhat slower and more measured than other sectors? Uh, to be honest, it's very hard for me to compare financial services to, let's say, other sectors that I may not be as familiar with. Um, but uh, what uh, is undoubtedly happening is the, the demand for and the appetite for cloud migrations and cloud first implementations is surging. Uh, Mm -hmm. One factor that may be holding some of the firms back is regulation and uh, the necessity to agree some uh, far-reaching changes with the regulators. Uh, definitely mm -hmm. on the level of capital markets infrastructure, that's that's definitely something that we're seeing. For example, uh, you know, if there's a regulation in place for you as a capital market infrastructure firm to have certain data be available uh, with certain durability and sort of granular, so certain granularity, and there's uh, there are some specific ways in which that has been implemented and has been used in practice for decades now, or like for a decade or two. Um, the s some underlying um, uh, models of how data is processed are are being changed by the advent of cloud-based solutions. Mm -hmm. But that switch, like we, you, you, you as a firm may know that you are able. To implement that based on on the cloud first approach but you need to convince the regulator that the regulatory requirements will be met reliably uh with this new technology and that's not an instantaneous process there needs to be a lot of education and, and uh, uh back and forth so uh that may be one of the factors um which probably means that a, any any cloud related decision is a delicate dance between business technology and now compliance executives, even within the confines no of one firm and perhaps larger, including the regulators as well going outside the firm. No doubt, but I, I think where the tables have turned now is whereas a few years back, you could hear cloud and security with a question mark in the same sentence. Uh, can we afford to be in the cloud for a security perspective? I think now the conversation is more like, can we afford not to be in the cloud from the security perspective? Mm -hmm. The resiliency uh, and uh, the uptime and the reliability of the best cloud platform providers out there far uh, um, outstrips anything that a private data center uh, could ever hope to accomplish because that's all they do. And they have gotten to a place where they're the best at it in the world. And now we have caught up to this reality. So mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I think that's an important change. The pendulum has swung that way. So on the subject of security and perhaps other skills, I'm sure as clients talk to you about upcoming cloud projects, cloud implementations, there's a range of skills that are being discussed, some of which mm -hmm. are perhaps easily developed for someone with quote unquote legacy skills, skill set, uh, some perhaps radically new. Can you give us a couple of examples of the cloud skills that are in particular demand today, right, right now in 2020? Uh, one very key important concept is infrastructure as code. Essentially, cloud is infrastructure as code. So you provision everything through a console or through scripts. Essentially, you are doing infrastructure as code through either a human-friendly console type interface or directly through scripting. So that actually has uh, far-reaching uh, um, implications for the process of software delivery. And what we call DevOps, right? Uh, doing infrastructure as code is a relatively new skill set. And that's where mm -hmm. we see most of our customers who are uh, climbing that that curve, the learning curve, and are advancing in their cloud journey, that's where they're experiencing some lack of expertise, a lack of capacity. And, and therefore, uh, certain wastage is taking place in the process of trying to deliver new software over the cloud infrastructure. Um, because if, if you're going to live in a world where everything's scriptable, infinitely scriptable, and infinitely 
uh, automatable, but you're still doing things manually, you're kind of uh, missing the boat, right? So DevOps yeah. is a critical component where we are seeing on a daily basis customers struggle with, and uh, that's why you know that, that that's where we're adding a lot of value by providing that critical skill set. Now, any conversation in 2020 cannot be complete without some mention of COVID, whether or mm -hmm. not we do live in a cloud world, uh, maybe up for some debate, but what is not up to debate is that we do live in the COVID world. So I'm curious, in your client conversations, do you see clients tone shifting as we emerge perhaps a little bit in the next phase of COVID, whatever that is? Uh, you know what, I'll speak from my direct experience and, uh, I know that I've been very fortunate and the teams that I've been working with at DataArt are very fortunate, but our customers have actually not really uh, uh, pumped the brakes on almost anything uh, uh, as, COVID, uh, as COVID struck. If anything, things seem to accelerate. Um, I know this is not universalizable in any way. This is just our, our specific experience in this little corner of, of the industry. Um, I think what it may have to do with is um, cloud is about flexibility and one of the facets of flexibility is resiliency and resiliency is obviously a very big theme these days and so yeah. um, the ability to procure anything from anywhere at any place any time in any way that you want um, is cloud taken to the limit right anything yeah. it i should say yeah. right so yeah. and 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 uh now it's not no longer oh it's just our let's say development servers or let's say development and testing and production servers. No, it's actual workspaces, workplaces rather, like uh, our uh, rank and file personnel's uh, work machines. They also mm -hmm. can, and probably in some cases should be pro procured through the cloud. And um, the this black swan nature of what happened starting March for most of the world, m many managers and executives up to the reality that um, if they're not relying on cloud to a sufficient degree, they simply don't have enough flexibility to respond to both threats like COVID. Threats and opportunities are ultimately the same thing, and that is change. And uh, the ability to respond to change determines whether uh, you know, a particular change in, in the circumstances is a threat to you or an opportunity. If you can't respond to it, then everything's a threat. If you can respond to it, then everything is an opportunity because it's affecting you, but it's also affecting your competitors. And if you're more agile than your competitors, you can actually come out ahead as a result of this change. I, we could discuss this for hours, but you don't have hours today and our viewers probably don't. So I hope we can do this again. Thanks so much. I really appreciate oh, it. You. Again, Peter Vajhansky, Senior Vice President at Daytart. Thanks again. <laughs>